battery system. For that, we have another video. If you missed our previous video, you can go through the link which is mentioned in the description box. So, let's start. Did you ever think how you can differentiate your mother's smell from the other women's? And why you like your partner's smells but not the other? Every information and every question's answer is hidden inside this mechanism. So what happens during this time? When you sense or you encounter a smell, it will go to the olfactory mucous membrane, which is rest just beneath our receptors. Here we have lots and lots of mucus where they have odorant binding proteins. These odorant binding proteins binds with the odorant molecule and concentrates them. And then it will carry it to the cilia of the receptor cells. Here when the odorant molecule bind with the receptor cell, what happens? Here it will causes the activation of the substrate receptor complex. Now whenever this substrate receptor complex activated, it causes the activation of heterotrimeric G proteins. Now what is a heterotrimeric G protein? Now hetero stands for any component that have different subunits. Now this G protein have three different subunits. That is alpha, beta and the gamma subunits. When it is in the resting condition, these G proteins remain bound with the GDP. When they acquire the signal and activate it, this GDP is exchanged with the GTP and the alpha subunit along with the GTP goes away from the rest of the part. Here same happens and this GTP alpha subunit activates adenyl cyclase which is an enzyme that converts the ATP into the cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP concentration when rises inside the cell body that is a receptor cell of our olfactory mucosa which causes activation of another set of the cationic channel. This cationic channel causes influx of the sodium and the calcium inside the cell which you can see in the picture. These components will be increase the positivity inside the cell which is called depolarization. Now depolarization is the first phase of the generation of the action potential. That causes the generation of action potential then within the receptor cell. By this process, the chemical stimuli is converted into the electrical stimuli. Now these electrical stimuli via the, via the action will go to the another set of neuron which is rest within the olfactory bar. Here an interesting thing happens. What is that? From the different receptor cells, the actions will go to a single mixture of the tufted cell, which is the next set of the neuron. So here the refinement of the olfactory stimulus happens. Now what is the refinement? Now what is the role of this conjunction, right? Uh, for say, whenever some problem happens among your friends, what you will do? You will go to another, uh, another friend and ask about what happened. And then go to the next set of the friend and ask what happened. So that you can collect the information from their side and you can judge properly what happened in that problem. So that you can treat in a better way, right? Like that, our mitra and the tufted cell collect information from the receptor cells, that is a different receptor cell, which respond differently to the different stimulation or the same odorant molecule, okay? And then decides which type of stimulation it is. That is called the refinement. And apart from that, in the olfactory bulb, we have another set of the neurons that is called the lateral inhibitory neuron, which is also 
seen in the picture which is called periglomerular neurons or the cranial neurons which also helps in the refinement process. So more or less you, you understand now what happens within this junction and after going to the information to the next set of cells, there are also action potential generates which is then passed through the olfactory tract. Now the olfactory tract have lots and lots of neurons from the mitral cell and the tuftal cell. These neurons set form the olfactory tract which is then will go to the olfactory cortex of our brain. Now this olfactory cortex have several portions. What is that portions? One is the olfactory tubercle, piriform cortex, amygdala portion and the anterior cortex. These two olfactory tubercle and the piriform cortex conjointly form the primary olfactory cortex region which helps in the sneezing. Now what is a sneezing process? For say whenever you are breathing normally, this person is called a quiet breath. Okay. Now when we encounter a smell first time, what happens if you like that smell? You start to smelling more and more deeply. Now this deep smelling process is called the sneezing process. Okay. Which is generated by the this set of neurons here. This is called a piriform. Okay. Apart from that, we have the amygdala which is concerned with our emotions. So that the olfactory information which is collected is connected with the emotions. So we smell differently our mother and our partners too. And we have some emotional bonding with them, right? It is the reason. Apart from that, we have the another portion that is involved with the differentiation of the stimuli or the smelling signals so that without opening our eye, we can sense that the biryani smell is coming from the left side, right? And that is the biryani. So which portion it is? It is the anterior cortex. So by this process, we can differentiate various types of smell information. Apart from that, we have another component where the branches of the olfactory tract goes, is called the neocortex. Here, we also can discriminate different types of scents or the smelling components. Okay, so if you like our video, you can like, share and subscribe and can hit the bell icon.